Hello lovely freaks and welcome back to another episode. I'm your host Amanda and I'm Hannah and if you're new here, hi, welcome. If you like things strange and unusual, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us and you can go down to the description box and you can see where all of our social media is, um, Instagram, Facebook, and all that jazz. And all that jazz. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so, yeah. Uh, First of all, I want to say sorry about the whole Ronald Ron thing on the last episode. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go listen to it because it was a really good episode about possession and about the movie, basically about the movie The Exorcist and, like, the story behind that movie. Um... So anyways, but I think I got confused because I was looking through articles and his name, some people said that his actual name was Ronald. Oh, okay. So. Well, I mean, it was a fake name. Roland so. was the fake name. And then some of it was, some of, some of them said Robbie. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to say something. Okay. Have you watched that movie, The House in Between? It's that horror, f- well, hold oh, on. It's that I documentary have. About a house that's haunted in Florence, Mississippi. Really? Mm-hmm. So I watched it the other day because it was finally on Amazon for free. And I... It was really awesome. Like, it was really cool. Hmm. One of the things I will say that they said, which I didn't know this. So paranormal investigators say that some places that have a lot of limestone deposit yeah. in the ground... They're more susceptible to paranormal activity because of something about the energy charge or something like that. And I was, and then they were saying that there's a lot of paranormal activity around in these in this area and in Florence and you know all that. And I was like, well, that you know that's crazy. And also UFO activity. There's a lot of UFO activity. Yeah. Uh, I was like, what? So I won't say where we live, but we don't live very far from Florence, and yeah. that would explain like you know. Maybe your gross girl thing or something yeah. like that, you know? Um, well, I'm kind of close to it, so yeah. that's weird. So, I mean, we pretty much, we, we're we not from Florence, but we grew up basically right down the road. I mean, yeah. so we would drive to Florence when we needed, like, to go to the grocery store or to go to, like, Dollar General or eat or something eat. like that. <laughs> so, anyway, so, yeah, I thought it was really cool. A lot of people didn't like the, uh, like, I saw it trending on TikTok, the documentary. And a lot of people didn't like it because, of course, they were like, they were like, oh, well, all you see, spoiler alert, all you see is like, you know, doors shutting on their own or a ball rolling down the stairs by itself. And I'm like, that's freaking awesome. Like, yeah. so a lot of the stuff that I saw was really cool. I mean, y'all, honestly, if, if for anybody that like captures like on TikTok where they capture like these ghosts and they're like it's like a shadow that moves past you know i honestly think half of that's fake yeah because i've never legitimately seen an apparition or anything like or that shadow. in a film or documentary or something like that it's usually always you know something like that like something moves or you know something yeah. so anyway it's really cool so if you want to check it out it's called the house in between I'm pretty sure it's on amazon prime right now for free okay so, without further ado, we're going to dive into Jeffrey Dom. Old Jeffrey Old today. Jeffrey. So, Jeffrey Dahmer, this is going to be a two part series for sure. Um, because there's so much to there's cover. There's so much to cover. And I didn't want to do the normal run of the mill. Like, everybody knows about Jeffrey Dahmer, but I kind of wanted to try to find as much information as I could and kind of throw things in there that maybe people don't know. There's a lot of things that I found out that I didn't actually know either. Which is crazy. So, yeah. Um, It's going to be a two-part. And then we'll have, like, an episode on Wednesday for you guys. Maybe we'll do, like, an urban legend or something like that. Something kind of lighthearted because Jeffrey is not at all. Um, Full disclaimer, we're going to talk about... Pretty much everything you can think of. I mean, yeah. we're going to talk about cannibalism. We're going to talk about rape. We're going to talk about 
dismemberment. We're going to talk about it all <laughs> because yeah. Jeffrey, so if you don't want Jeffrey did it, it all. <laughs> so well, if you don't want to hear it, if you uh, can't handle things like that, I'm not going to be able to say, okay, this is the part where we are just going to talk about some things. Just skip through no, it. It's going to be the entire time. It's going to be the entire time. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer was like, if you were to watch a horror film and you were like, wow, that's messed up, then Jeffrey probably did it. Um, more than likely he did everything you, you've seen. Like the house of the house of corpses. Like yeah. when I was reading this, so when I was like reading all the articles and everything, it just reminded me of that. I was like, maybe that's where they grew their inspiration from. Like probably well, Rob Zombie was like, Jeffrey. <laughs> I saw like a documentary with him and he said he watched a lot of scary movies and his favorite is the Exorcist, Exorcist 3. 3. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. So we're going to start off with, we're going to start at the end basically, and we're going to go backwards. So I'm going to start with the very last victim. And this is pretty much how Jeffrey got caught. Now, I'm not going to tell you how he got caught, but just listen and enjoy. On July 22nd, 1991, Jeffrey approached three men and offered to pay them $100 if they would accompany him back to his apartment to pose for some nudes. So, normally that's what he would do. He would go to the gay bars around in, in uh, Milwaukee and he would ask the guys standing outside or maybe he'd find a sex worker or someone inside and he would say, hey, I'm a photographer. You want to come back to my apartment and I'll, you know, take some nude photos of you and I'll pay you like $50, $100, whatever. Um, He said we can also drink a few beers and have like a small little party. One of the men, Tracy Edwards, 32, agreed to go back to his apartment with him. When Tracy entered Jeffrey's apartment, he said there was a foul odor and several boxes of hydrochloric acid laying around on the floor, like empty bottles, and boxes where the hydrochloric acid was, like, in the boxes. You'll figure out what that's for later. Um, So, Jeffrey said he would use the hydrochloric acid to clean bricks, because I guess Tracy asked him, like, what do you use these for? And he said it was to clean bricks. Clean bricks Don't know why okay. he was cleaning bricks. Whatever. Yeah, I'd be like, why are you <laughs> cleaning bricks? <laughs> yeah. They don't need While to be While they clean. were talking, Jeffrey asked him, he said, hey, look at the fish tank over there. Look at the fish. You know, you like my fish? And when he did, when Tracy turned his head, Jeffrey slapped handcuffs on his wrist. Just one wrist. When Tracy asked what's happening... As Jeffrey tried to handcuff the other wrist, but he was unsuccessful, then he then just, he then told Tracy, come to the bedroom with me and you're going to post for some nudes. So Tracy was thinking, okay, he's just likes it kinky or whatever. Um... When they went, yeah, (laughs) when they went to the bedroom, Tracy said later when he was telling police, he said that he noticed there was a lot of male posters all over the walls and that the Exorcist 3 was playing on TV, kind of like in a loop. He, he also saw a blue 57 gallon drum in the corner of the room and there was a serious strong odor coming from it. And we'll get to what that drum is later as well. Jeffrey pulled a knife out and told Tracy it was time to take the nudes. Tracy was a little uneasy, obviously, about this, but decided to give Jeffrey what he wanted. He began to unbutton his shirt and told Jeffrey he would do the nudes as long as he unhandcuffed him and put the knife away. Jeffrey didn't say anything. He just started watching TV and rocking back and forth and chanting before looking at back at Tracy. He then placed, sorry, he then placed his head on Tracy's chest to listen to his heartbeat while Tracy had his shirt open. Then he pressed the knife against his chest and he said he was going to eat his heart later. Whoa. Yeah. So. I I haven't heard details like this. Yeah. And this one, so I'm like, oh, interesting. So, let's go back in time now, and let's talk a little bit about Jeffrey and how he grew up. So, Jeffrey was born May 21st, 1960, in West Allis, Wisconsin. His father was Lionel Dahmer and Joyce Dahmer. 
When Jeffrey was young, his dad was a chemist student, and he was, what, like when he was younger, and his mother was a teletype machine instructor. So that's like somebody that basically helped people learn how to use, like, uh, I guess their form of like instant messaging or something like that. Okay. Later on, Jeffrey's dad became a research chemist and was rarely around um, because he was always working. Nevertheless, Jeffrey was said to be generally, he was like doted on a lot when he was an infant and a toddler, and his parents seemed to like give him a lot of attention. Um, but his mother was known to be a bit tense. She was greedy for attention and pity. And she would argue with her husband and neighbors all the time. So his mom was basically a hypochondriac. She was sick a lot, but not really. Like, there wasn't really anything wrong with her. Mm. And, so she um, just wanted attention all the time. Yeah, she wanted attention all the time. When Jeffrey was in first grade, his mother began to spend a lot of time in bed. So I'm assuming she kind of, like, lost her job. Because I couldn't find anything about that. But she spent, like, most of her time in bed. She kind of came, like, depressed. Yeah. And... All this other stuff. So, she suffered from... She, she was a hypochondriac. She also suffered from depression. And she ed, uh, tried to attempt suicide with Equimel. Which was... That is like an anxiety medication. Mm -hmm. It's for anxiety and nervousness. Um, but, unfortunately, Jeffrey was not... He didn't have, like, too much time devoted to him, I guess you could say. So they it's were more excuse, worried about each other but, than they were yeah. more worried about like um uh more worried about Jeffrey. Jeffrey, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Before his away. fourth birthday, Jeffrey was diagnosed with a double hernia and he needed surgery. So that's pretty crazy because a hernia usually comes from like stress. And it was said that his parents did fight a lot. And his mom was really, like... She wasn't, like, abusive or anything. But she just... I guess... Mentally? Abusive? Maybe. No. Probably. Maybe like, kind of just, like, she didn't really argue care a lot about And all that. Yeah. Yeah. No one explained the surgery to Jeffrey. And no one told him what was going to happen. And he was apparently traumatized from this. After this, he was withdrawn and seemed depressed... All the time, which is really sad at three. I mean, at only four. Yeah. Jeffrey had a younger brother that he got to name. He named him David, which I can't believe he was allowed to pick out the name, but whatever. He could have named him anything. David seemed to be getting a lot more attention than Jeffrey, um, than he ever did. Like, when David I was didn't born. I know he had a brother. Mm -hmm. When David was born, he was getting a lot more attention, and Jeffrey noticed he got more attention than he did when he was little. Jeffrey started showing interest in bones, and his dad was kind of excited about this because, you know, his dad was a research chemist, so he thought, okay, this is going to be a really fun, you know, thing to kind of teach him, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, one night while the family was eating chicken, Jeffrey said, uh, Jeffrey was around five at this time, and he said to his dad, quote, dad, what would happen if... If I took these chicken bones and dropped them in bleach. Mm -hmm. Lionel, his father, is thinking at this point, okay, maybe he's just interested in science. His dad then showed him how to bleach bones. He bought him a little chemist set. And Jeffrey and his dad would find rodents, dead rodents, underneath the house. And they would bleach the hair off of them and then the tissue as well. Well, I don't that's too healthy to show yeah, a kid to do at that. Five. I can I can see why he was interested. So wow. Jeffrey then started collecting bones and they called it his bucket of bones. And they would also call it like his rattle, like he would rattle the bones. And the family oh, the family called this bucket of bones his fiddlesticks. Yeah. Wow. His fiddlesticks. So they were kind of like very backwoods. I morbid. guess. Well, I don't not know. only that, morbid about death with creatures. Yeah, well, you his know, dad was a research a, chemist, yeah, so I understand when you have that. A kid but when that's really young and they see dead animals and like that, 
And then you're like, ah, let's like helping them dissect them. Yeah, let's and dissect it. And they're gonna think, oh, so whatever. This is Death normal. Is nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can kind of see why he grew like. Well, that. throughout his entire childhood, he would continue to collect these bones of his. He would collect bones from roadkill mainly, dogs, cats, squirrels, etc. As he got older, he would place the bones in jars and have them in his clubhouse. So, probably none of the kids wanted to come play with Jeffrey at his house. As he kept getting older, he started to do weird stuff with the heads of the animals. He would impale them with spikes Mm. and stick them around in the ground. At this time, I would say that he maybe needed to, like, stop doing this and, like, you know, this was... I would think that his parents would be like, okay, that's taking it a little too far. But up until now, maybe he was just, like, interested in the anatomy. But at this point, like, you know, that's... Yeah, that's like... He's not. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. he's... Obviously, he's not. Jeffrey did say in a Stone Phillips interview that he hid this from his dad, Lionel. Hmm. Like, the heads on the spikes. He also had an animal graveyard. One of their former neighbors, Eric Tyson, said, quote... He had a little graveyard with animals buried in it. There were skulls placed on top with little crosses. He had quite the collection of skeletons. Another boy he had went to school with named Mike Costello said that Jeffrey liked to stuff animals, kind of like taxidermy type. Yeah. When he asked Jeffrey, like, why are you doing this or whatever, Jeffrey told him, I always wanted to to do this to a human. Wow. Serial killer alert. So, <laughs> did he ever go to, like, therapy or anything? No. I mean, his no. parents... According to his dad, like, there's an interview where his dad's talking and him... Mm-hmm. And his dad says that he didn't really know any of that. Like, he didn't know about the so intensity Jeffrey, of it, I guess Jeffrey, you could say. I guess you could say Jeffrey knew it was wrong. Because in his interview... Like, they were interviewing him saying, did you know all this was wrong when you were killing? And he said yes, but it was, like, an addiction that he couldn't stop. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely an addiction. And it was probably... So, Jeffrey didn't like... And we'll get to that. We'll get to it. But he... there In an interview, we'll get to what he says. But it'll probably be in part two. But he did not like killing. Like, the act of killing was not something he liked. He liked the aftermath of killing. And we'll get into what that means. Because, yeah... Um, but the killing part, no, he didn't like it at all. And Mm -hmm. obviously, I mean, he didn't kill any of these animals. He would get dead, already dead animals and do these things. But, you know, be a scientist. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he could have been a school teacher and like dissected stuff. Or he could have been a um, person that, what's the person? The morgue person. Autopsy technician? Yeah. Yeah. Jeffrey said that his parents fault a lot and his teacher even said when he was younger teachers a lot of his teachers when he was younger they said that he seemed like he was felt like he was being neglected so not that he was being neglected but obviously Jeffrey was talking to them or something and he would tell them you know I feel neglected and stuff like that and he was only in first grade when he was saying this Hmm. so that that's like six seven you know yeah Lionel's dad, I mean, Lionel's dad, Lionel, Jeffrey's dad, um, he claimed that Jeffrey was sexually assaulted by an older boy in the neighborhood when he was eight. But Jeffrey, however, doesn't remember this at all. Jeffrey said in an interview that at this time, around nine or ten, he started having tendencies towards necrophilia and feeling excited by death. So when he was eight, his dad claimed that he was sexually assaulted, but I don't know if maybe he just blocked it out and that's why he can't remember it. Yeah. Um, I don't know why his dad would claim that that happened, you know. Um, it seems like he did block it out. Yeah, maybe. And then at 9 and 10 was when he started having those, you know, sexual urges just towards ne- necrophilia and things like that. Yeah. When Jeffrey was around 12, he would come to school drunk. Yeah, you heard me right. He would drink out, uh, like, he would have, like, a bottle, like, in his locker Mm -hmm. of, like, whiskey. And he'd just go to his locker and drink. drink? Yeah, he was, 
So one of the things I Jeffrey knew, was I a knew severe drank, alcoholic, but I didn't know that young. Like, why didn't the teachers like? Don't know. Different Where time, were I they? guess. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, yeah. He Jeff also was always drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's whatever. It's just Jeff. <laughs> so he also had an average. He had average grades, but he had a really high IQ, and so his grades. The reason why they were kind of, like, so-so was because he basically just didn't care. Like, he didn't want to be at school. Yeah. The only subject he did like, obviously, was science and lab. Some of his classmates said that he would sit in the classroom with a solo cup, like the like a paper cup, yeah. and he would drink scotch out of it. Now, I don't know how true that is. I mean, surely the teacher would have smelled it. <laughs> but yeah. who knows? I'd be I don't like, know. hey, no, you're not going to do that. He tried to keep himself... He tried to keep to himself. <coughs> Excuse me. Good Lord. In school. But he would also try to get attention sometimes in school. So one time he faked, like, having an epileptic seizure. And other times he would, like, draw outline bodies with chalk. Like, you know, like, um, on the concrete. Like, you know how, what's it, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like the police would yeah, do, yeah, like the police would stuff do. like that. So, so he was also <clears throat> man. I want to cough again. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. No. <laughs> um. So even though he was kind of like an odd person, a lot of people in school like considered him like the class clown. They said that he would do like ridiculous stuff to get attention, and they would even sometimes like pay him. To do, like, crazy class clown stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, one time, like, he would, like, sneak into, like, class photos. Like, if he would, like, the drama club. He wasn't part of the drama club. And yeah. he would, like, sneak in the photo. And, like, yeah. be in the yearbook, <laughs> you know? Um, and they would call it, they called this, when he would do something for money, they would call it doing a Dahmer. Huh. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. No, so I was now, like, now <laughs> I wonder in the future, they're like, oh. Yeah. He was doing a little too much Dahmer. Did too much of the Dahmer there for me. Um, underneath this funny high schooler side, though, he at times um, was starting to fantasize sexually about rape and domination. But not in a healthy way. Not like S&M type um, where like two parties are consenting or, you know, role play. He wanted... To literally rape someone. He mm. didn't like it when people would move during sex. He also, I think he wanted to maybe, uh, that he wanted to, um, just want to complete control as in, like, they're dead. Uh -huh. So he could yeah. do whatever he wanted with them, which... It's kind of weird to me. Like, I'm like, what? Why? Yeah, he kind of, he, he said that he wanted them to just lay there. Yeah. Like, even, I guess he maybe had sex, like, in high school or whatever, and he didn't like the, he said he didn't like it when they would move around. And I'm like, well, that oh, yeah. kind of needs to happen, yeah. but all right. <laughs> okay. Around 14 years old was when he realized he was gay. However, Jeffrey was in denial about it. He was in denial about it, like, his whole life, basically. He said he never understood why he was gay. But he never, and he never told his parents either. Um, at 16, 16, he started noticing a male jogger that would jog by his house every single day. He then started fantasizing about assaulting him and raping him while he was unconscious. Jeffrey says one day he took a baseball bat and waited in the bushes for the jogger to come on the path that he took every day. Mm -hmm. He said his plan was to hit him, knock him out, and then rape him while he was knocked out. However, for the jogger, this is a good thing because this was the one day that he didn't go running. He had been running for months by his house every day, but he didn't this. go this day. Could you imagine if you were the jogger Lucky and you found out bitch. later in life? Yeah. I'd be like, oh my god. I, I would never run again. Just stay in my house. He's like 400 yeah. pounds now. He's like, fuck no, I'm not going running. <laughs> Almost. I could have died by Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay, so July 24th, 1978. His parents get a divorce. David goes to live with his mom and Jeffrey ends up living with his dad. However, 
Jeffrey was left alone at home with no food and hard like I think his dad like hardly paid the electrical bill so like he didn't have electricity and stuff mm-hmm. like that and he was 17 at this time Lionel his dad basically like abandoned him and he married some woman named Sherry which apparently she was like a bitch, but wow. we'll talk I feel about that abandoned later. Even when my family just doesn't give me, like they go to fast food and they don't. <laughs> yeah. You didn't give me. You didn't give me nothing. I feel so abandoned. I can't imagine that. I'm 21. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, June 18th, 1978. While living alone at age 18, he committed his first murder. So we're about to get into it. Jeffrey admitted in an interview that he had fantasies about picking up a hitchhiker, raping the hitchhiker, and murdering them, which he picked up a hitchhiker and did this. Stephen Mark. Stephen Mark Hicks. Sorry. He was 18. Um, and he was headed to, like, a rock concert that day, and he was trying to kind of, like, get a ride from someone down the road, you know, blah, blah, blah. Jeffrey saw him, and he told him that he somehow he like convinced him not to go to the rock show but to come back to his house and like drink some beer and hang out and all that stuff mm. all that, all that <laughs> I like how you said that jazz, jazz. It says real quietly. Yeah. Jazz. <laughs> um when they got back to the house they drank for several hours um they had consensual sex and then he wanted to leave the house well jeffrey said The man wanted to leave, and I didn't want him to. Jeffrey hit him twice in the back of the head with a dumbbell, Mm -hmm. and then he strangled him with a dumbbell until he died. After Stephen died, Jeffrey then masturbated over his dead body and then, like, went to bed. Like, just went to bed? I'm tired, yeah. Went to bed, left the body there. It's like, I'm tired now after all that When he woke back up later on... Um, he dissected the body and cut him up into small pieces and then he buried it in the backyard. So he like dismembered it, cut it into small pieces, like, you know, cut the arms off and all that. And he buried it in the backyard. Well, two weeks later, Jeffrey was concerned that he might get caught because he had just like, you know, cut up a dead body and put it in his backyard and it was starting to rot. So he was like, you know, what if it smells or what if animals start digging it up? So, he then dug up the rotting corpse, stripped the flesh off, boiled the remaining bones in acid, and then flushed the rest of the flesh down the toilet, which at this point it had become like a gelatinous type of substance. He then pulverized the bones with a sledgehammer into dust and then just sprinkled them in the backyard. Wow. Which... That's insane to me for, like, his first murder. Like, he had the mindset to be that calm and be like, all right, let me do this. And, like, go into that much intensity with it. You know what I mean? People would freak out and just, like, put it in a dumpster. Yeah. But this dude was like, "Mm, what am I going to do with these bones? Oh, crush them into dust and sprinkle them in the backyard. (laughs) Like, it's insane. He's probably thought about it a million times, though. Like, that guy was um that he murdered that he murdered yeah. is still considered like a missing person because they never found his body so even though mm. even though somebody confesses to a murder if it's a missing person they still have to find the body in order to take it off the missing persons list and lay them to rest but they weren't able to do that because Jeffrey was like I have no idea like there's no like and that's the thing like with Jeffrey's and that happens with a, a few more of Jeffrey's cases, uh, Jeffrey's um, victims. I'm just like, well, no shit, there was nothing left. He, yeah. like, he, ate it, or later on, he ate it, or pulverized it, or flushed it down the drain. Like, I mean, you know. Yeah. So, Did he eat this one, this victim? No, he no. didn't start eating. He wasn't, he didn't start becoming cannibal, a cannibal yet. That's, that happens way later. Yeah. Um, Crazy enough, after after this, like, after his first murder, he just continued life like normal. He went to high school, he graduated, and then he got into Ohio State. However, he dropped out after his first semester of college because he was drinking, like, all the time. And his dad was like, okay, you gotta figure out what you're gonna do with your life. 
So Jeffrey decided to join the army. He joined December 29th, 1978. He was stationed in Germany as a combat medic. Let that sink in. Oh, you were looking over. So I was like, what? <laughs> what? I thought it was like a freaking spire. Like, what? No. But he was a combat medic. So he yeah. was like, yeah, the guy in combat that went out there and saved sewed what? him up and yeah. helped him. I and I was just saved, like, what? Didn't. The actual. I wonder if he killed, like, just let some people die. Well, oh, hold on. So, a soldier named Billy Capshaw, in 2010, he came forward and said that while he was stationed in Germany with Jeffrey at the age of 17, Jeffrey raped him over and over for 17-month period. Another soldier named Preston Davis then said that he believed that Jeffrey actually drugged him and raped him inside of an armored personal carrier uh, car- truck mm-hmm. in 1979. Cass- Capshaw, Capshaw was taken to the dispensary for a rape kit to see if he was telling the truth. The doctors didn't do anything. Like, they did the rape kit, but he doesn't know what happened. And then he didn't find out, and they, like, sent him back to his room. He didn't find out until ten years later that there wasn't a rape kit and the results were actually, like, just just discarded. (laughs) Yeah. So, he did actually, like, he didn't murder anyone that we know of. And they would say, like, they tried to, like get him to go out to, like, bars and stuff. Like, they tried to get him to go out to, um, like, women's, like, brothels and stuff like that over there. And he didn't want to go. Like, that wasn't something he wanted to do. Obviously, because he was gay. Yeah, yeah. So, probably because he was gay, mostly. Um, yeah, he didn't murder anyone. He just raped those men. And there's no telling who else, excuse me, he did it to. In 1981, due to alcohol, uh, alcohol abuse, Dahmer was deemed unsuitable for military service and later discharged. When he got discharged, he moved to Miami Beach, Florida. He was working at like a sandwich shop, and he was renting a hotel from. Uh, he was renting a, a hotel room. Mm -hmm. Um, He didn't want to go back home because his dad, like, he didn't want to tell his dad that he had gotten kicked out of the army and all that. Because he had already gotten, you know, yeah, basically he flunked uh, college. College. Also, of course, he continued to drink heavily, even when he was living in Miami. And, um, which led him to get fired. And then he started, like, sleeping on the beach. And he then asked his father if he could move back to Ohio and live with him. And Lionel said yes, um, but only after a while of living with his stepmother and his dad, he decided to move out. Um, because before he moved out, he actually got arrested for public drunkenness on October 7th, 1981. And Lionel tried to get him sober, but it wasn't working, so he moved in with his grandmother. Oh, yeah. Grandmama. And then she was oblivious the entire time. Yeah. Jeffrey loved his grandmother, and he actually, like, respected her a lot. On August 7th, 1982, he exposed himself at a state park, like, to kids, and it was like a fair, like, state park fair carnival thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was arrested and only fined. Of course, he was drunk. And then, again, in September on September 8th, 1986, in Milwaukee, he got arrested for masturbating in public in front of two little boys. Mm. He was supposed to be sentenced to a year in prison, which would have been nice. However, he told the judge that he was just actually peeing in public and he was intoxicated, so it was like, you know, my bad situation. And instead, they overturned it and charged him with a disorderly conduct and he didn't have to serve a year. But he did have to register as a sex offender because he showed himself... No matter what, he showed himself to children. So, he was a registered sex offender. Which didn't mean a lot back then because nobody really knew you were a registered sex offender. Nowadays, you can look up an app, look up on that, look up on the app and see your sex offenders in your, you know, area. Or look up on the website. Yeah. Um, in 1985, 
he got his job working at the Ambrosia Chocolate Factory in Milwaukee, which is where he worked up until he got arrested. Um, at this point, he was, like, this is when he started going to gay bars and he started sleeping around with men. He said, however, he was training himself to look at people as objects of pleasure instead of actual people. So that way, you know, it helped him later when he needed to murder. Yeah. Um, he started drugging his potential partners at, like, in the bathrooms and of these bathhouses and gay bars. Yeah. And he would rape them. Well, the people that, like, worked at the clubs, they eventually realized what he was doing. And they just kind of told him he was no longer allowed there. Um, I don't know why they didn't call the police. police but maybe yeah. they weren't, like, the bathhouses, maybe they weren't supposed to have... Maybe they weren't clubs. Maybe they were, like, brothels type things. So they yeah. weren't supposed to be open anyways. After this, he saw one uh, uh, on the news. He saw that there was an 18-year-old boy that had just died. And, of course, uh, you can guess what his thoughts were. Uh, he thought, huh, maybe I should dig up his body and perform necrophilia on his corpse. So he tried to do that. But luckily for the poor dead 18 year old, um, the ground was too hard because it was like in the middle of winter. Yeah. So he wasn't able to dig him up. Dig him up. Thank God. Thank God. Um, then in November 1987, he tried to lure a man from the bar. Um, his name was Stephen Tomey. He was 25 years old. He bought him. Oh, he brought him back to a hotel room. He said he was just going to drug him and rape him and then let him go. So, you know, nothing nothing major. Just drug and rape and let go. Um, however, after doing this, Jeffrey said that the next morning when he looked over at the man, like, he, they, like, had sex and he did drug him. And then he, they wake up the next morning, Jeffrey looks over and he sees that the man has been like beat to hell and back and his chest has been crushed in. Mm. He then realized that his hands were bloody and Jeffrey said that he realized in that moment that he had killed the man and he didn't even know how he had done it. Which I fully believe because, I mean, he's confessed to everything else. Why would that yeah, be the one that he doesn't confess yeah. to? So, I think like he probably got like blackout drunk and you know, just did him. the damn thing. Yeah. Um, he took the man's body in a suitcase back to a grandma's and he dismembered the body and took the bones out of the body. Then he cut up the rest into tiny little bite sized pieces. No, he didn't eat them yet. He then put all the pieces into uh, the little pieces and the, he put them in to like the acid mixture or whatever and then he smashed the bones again into dust and this time he did keep the head he kept the head for two weeks wrapped in a blanket then he put it in bleach mixture and took the skull and kept it kind of like as a trophy so that was like the first time he kept you know the parts. The, the parts. That was the first time that he kept the head. Yeah. Because up until this, you know, he keeps skulls and he keeps heads. But um, this, this was the first one. Lionel was getting suspicious of Jeffrey. And he decided to look through his stuff, like in his grandmother's room. He decided to look through his closet. To which he found a locked box. The box contained a human head and a penis, but Lionel didn't know this at this point because it was locked. He actually thought it was just porn. He kept asking Jeffrey, and he was like, you need to tell me what's in the box because this is your grandmother's house. You need to respect her. And Jeffrey was like, there's nothing in the box, Dad, you know. So Jeffrey finally went upstairs, and he took the body parts out, and he replaced it with porn. He replaced it with straight porn because he didn't want his dad to know that yeah. he was gay. He was probably thinking he was gay. Though. Yeah. And then he, the next morning, he told his dad, like, look, this is what was in the box. You know. Yeah. Um, at this point, Jeffrey started, like, working out a lot. So, he was, like, a tall dude. He was really tall. He was, like, six foot something. And he was, like, pretty buff. Um, he wanted to get strong so that way it could help him, like, 
take down his victims if he needed to. Like, if the drugs wore off or something like that. Because, like I said, he didn't like the actual physical killing part. But if he needed it, he wanted to be, like, buff and ready, I guess. I don't know. Um, He met a young native boy named James Duxtutter. At the gay bar, he was actually only 15, so he was actually outside the gay bar, but he was working as, like, kind of like a sex worker. He was, like, working on the streets. Yeah. Jeffrey took him back to his grandmother's house, promised him that he would give him $50 if he did some nude photos. Then they went to Jeffrey's room. They started drinking. They had sex. Jeffrey then drugged him. He put, uh... Usually he would put, like, sleeping pills in their drinks. Mm -hmm. Um, Then when the boy passed out, he strangled him to death. And after he died, then he raped his dead body. He drug his body down to the basement, dismembered him, and doing again, like, what he had done to the previous victims. You know, all that that stuff. Um, March 1988, he met Richard Guerrero. Outside of the bar, outside of a bar again, they went back to grandmother's. They drank, talked. He drugged his drink. So same thing over and over. Um, after Richard passed out, he strangled him with a uh, leather strap. And then after he died, he tried to, or he did succeed. I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but he performed oral sex on his corpse. How? I don't know. Uh, then I think of, there's still blood to that part of the body. The yeah. Of the body. Then of course he dragged him to the basement and then did his usual like dismemberment and all that. Once these people were drugged, he would sit by them and talk to them and rub on them. So he didn't like immediate like they're drugged. Boom, he strangles them. No, he like sit with them for like hours. He would then listen to their heartbeat. To see if they were coming, like, in and out of the drug state. Yeah. He would drug them more and then finally strangle them till they died. So, he didn't want them to come out of their drug state, but he would listen to their heartbeat to, like, make sure they're not coming out. And if they were, he'd give them more. Yeah. He would, like, caress them. And, you know, because his thing was he didn't want someone to move. Like, he wanted someone to just lay there. Yeah. <laughs> and my thing is, get up. Get a blow-up doll, dude. Which, he actually does, like, have a mannequin at one point. Yeah. But it doesn't give him, like, the satisfaction. Or just talk to your partner and be like, I just want you to not move. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can go with that. pink, but all right. All right, I can go with that. (laughs) Like, I don't understand. Like, yeah. I mean, in the interest of me not going out here and raping somebody, could you just not move? Move. (laughs) Like... I'd be like, okay. Okay. (laughs) Fine then. Weird flex, but all right. Um, April, in April, he met a man named Ronald Flowers. He did the same process with him. Drugged his drink with sleeping pills. Before he went to strangle him, however, his grandmother said, Is that you, Jeffrey? Oh, my lord. (laughs) Which Jeffrey replied, sure is. (laughs) <laughs> sure is, sure Grandma. Sure is, Grandma. What you need? I'm kind of busy here. <laughs> kind of killing this person. Um, then he decided not to kill the guy. However, he couldn't let the guy go because he had drugged him and seemed as though he had given him a little too much. So the guy was like floating in and out of consciousness. Mm-hmm. He decided to take the guy to the county hospital where he dropped him off. Like just threw him out the car. The guy goes, after he, like, gets a little bit sober, he goes straight to the county police. Um, he decides that, so... So, does he tell him everything? Yeah, he tell. it's so, he's kind of still, like, in a drunken state, mm-hmm. um, but he tells them everything, and they actually thought that it was just, like, a domestic dispute against quarreled lovers, so they didn't do anything. Like, they didn't really? even look into it. Yeah. Probably that because, happens a lot yeah. to Jeffrey. Well, I mean, probably because that, oh, they're gay. So, they're yeah. probably like, oh, well, that's, we're not going to get into that. Which, God. And, you on. know, one of the most infamous, and we'll get there in part two, but one of the most infamous things could have led to, like, him going to prison. And it didn't. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, I know what you're yeah. talking about. 
And we'll get there. That pissed me off more than you can even imagine. So his grandmother at this point is like tired of his drinking and she's tired of like these men coming in and out all hours of the night or really just coming in and she doesn't see him go out because, you know. Yeah, they're why fucking she, dead. Yeah, why didn't she get a clue? Like, because she's like eighty something. So I yeah, mean, yeah, but I mean, not that, but knowing that he was gay, you know, like why? why oh would, yeah, <laughs> this I guess thirty-year-old man's just yeah. bringing men and they're leaving and or they're not leaving, but you know, just coming in the middle of the night. I wonder what he's doing, just yeah. hanging out with them in their room. Just like, come out. on, man. <laughs> um, so she decided to tell his father, and she told him. That there was also a strange smell coming from her basement. And she would see black ooze in her garbage cans. Black like, Because he would take the body parts once they became, like, gelatinous. Oh. He would just throw it in the trash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes he would flush it down the toilet, but if he couldn't, it was... Yeah. So Jeffrey told them that he was picking up roadkill again. So he was just doing what he did back in his younger days. Um, that's what he was doing. And that's that's okay. what the smell was. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, all right. okay, roadkill, roadkill, whatever. whatever. September 1988, he moved out and into an apartment on 808 North 24th Street in Milwaukee. After he moved in, on the same night, of course, he lured a 13-year-old boy, Asian boy, from school to his apartment. He said he would give him $50 if he'd come back and help him test out his new camera because he was, like, a photographer and he needed somebody to help him. Uh-huh. Don't go anywhere with strangers, kids. Um, he, when he got there, he drugged the boy, drugged the boy's drink. He started to molest him, and the boy started to feel kind of sick, like, to his stomach. So, he... Got out of there somehow. I think Jeffrey kind of just, like, let him go after he was getting sick to his stomach. Jeffrey, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. But whatever. Um, he, thank God for the boy, but I'm just like, what? Um, then he. I don't understand why he's like. The boy oh, went. Oh, okay, you're sick. I'll yeah. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. The I, boy went to his parents, obviously, and then they went to the hospital and they pumped his stomach. They found drugs. So then they reported it to the police and the boy told them that, uh, the guy that did this was a blonde-haired, soft-spoken man that kidnapped him. He led the police straight to Jeffrey's apartment. They knew Jeffrey lived there because he was a registered sex offender already, obviously. And they arrested Jeffrey. He was charged with exploitation of a minor and sexual assault. So you're thinking, all right, he's gonna... This is it. Like, that's it. He goes to prison. We're done. No. He pleaded not guilty and paid two hundred and fifty thousand two hundred and fifty thousand. I was whoa. like, whoa. Two thousand five hundred money, Jeffrey. Two thousand five hundred dollars out of his pocket for bail. He then changed his mind and took a plea deal and he got eight years suspension. Eight years suspended sentence and served one year in county jail with five years of probation. He had to register as a sex offender, which whatever, he was already registered as one, but he had to stay registered as one. He went back to his grandmother's house until he was supposed to go to jail for a year. So he's back, moving him, moved him with grandma. So whilst waiting to go to jail, on March 29th, he went to another bar, of course, and he met 24-year-old Anthony Sears. Then him and Anthony took a road a ride back with some friends of Anthony's to his grandmother's house. And the friends, like, told Anthony, you know, call me tomorrow if you need to be picked up or whatever. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. that would not happen. Of course, when they got there, he did the usual. He did, however, change things up just a little bit because he mummified his head and penis and kept it. Later on, he boiled the head down through uh, to the skull and he kept it. He was, so, he pretty much did the same thing, you know, drugged him, all that stuff, and then killed him. Um, so, he was scheduled to start his one-year jail sentence in May. So, that was March when he killed that guy, and then in May, um, he got them to give him a work release once he, once he went to jail. So, he started, he was in jail, Mm -hmm. and... He got them to do a work release. So what that meant that what that meant was while he was in jail, he could 
go to work so that way he could like keep his job and he wouldn't get fired yeah um and then he at the end of his shift he would go back so he didn't have anywhere to put this head and penis this mummified head and penis so guess where he kept it in his um in his locker locker. in his locker at work at the ambrosia chocolate factory this this mother effer um could you imagine the balls like some of your the balls yeah like, just what like, if, yeah, I'll just bring it to work. Especially, like, nowadays, random drug search. Oh, fuck. I what am I going to do? penis and a head in there. <laughs> Baby, well, the like, dogs aren't going to smell yeah. it. <laughs> the drug dogs are going to smell it. Um, He took a 12-hour... They let him take a 12-hour release on Thanksgiving to hang out with his family and, you know, have Thanksgiving with his family. However, of course, Jeffrey did not do this. Uh, but karma's a bitch because he got blackout drunk at a bar mm-hmm. and then some random guy took him to a, some random apartment and raped him with a candlestick. Wow. And then he <laughs> let him go and Jeffrey just went on back to jail. He said, all right, I'm going back to jail. That was the, awful. That, that's just not ironic. I mean, kind of ironic. Because that's what he's doing to these people. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was weird. I wonder weird. in the moment was like, he was what? like, so this is what it feels like to be yeah. on the other hand of the stick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, because it was a candle. Literally. <laughs> um, after 10 months of good behavior, he got out of jail. He got released in 1990. So after he got released, he moved to Oxford Apartments on... 924 North 25th Street in Milwaukee, North Side, on May 14th. And this would be the apartment that he would be at to the end, uh, which later would become a place of nightmares. And that's where we're going to stop it. Okay. So we've made it to the apartment, and that's where we're going to stop. Um, I know most of the stuff, we're but about, some of the stuff yeah. I don't know. I'm like, We're almost oh, an hour in, so yeah. I figured we'll just pause it here. That's interesting. Um, yeah, so that's where we're going to stop it. And we'll pick up with part two. I'm looking to see how much. Yeah, because the next part, I've only written three pages so far. Or two, well, two and a half. But I've still got, like, probably two more pages to write. So... We'll pick up there um, because a lot of craziness happens. And then we'll talk about, like, the sex zombies that he wanted to make, basically. Sex? Oh, Well, you know, yeah. like, the acid in the brain. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it gets stuff. pretty... It gets pretty crazy. Like, I knew a lot about Jeffrey, but I guess I just never really sat down and looked it all up at once. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. Like, dude is just... I'm going to say one thing. Like, one of the things that blew my mind... Like, made me think of... Yeah, House of a Thousand Corpses or, like, Devil's Rejects or something like that. He would take showers with the dead bodies in his shower. Like, the dead bodies, like, after he would kill them. Yeah. He would put them in the bath before he dismembered them. Sometimes he would, like, chop some arms off or some Mm -hmm. legs... And then if he was like, oh shit, late for work, he would like hop in the shower, take a shower, and then fucking leave, book it to work, and then come back. And I was like, what the actual fuck? Like, I can't even, like, what? That is some straight up horror movie shit. Like, he just didn't straight even up. Care, man. Didn't even care. And you know, that's what I was, I was looking at his eyes, because I looked up a picture of him when he was younger. That's exactly, there's more white in his eyes. You oh, see yeah. That? Mm-hmm. See, if you look at his pupils, and you see there's more yeah. white. That's what I was talking about. That's what you were talking about? Yeah. So, I mean, his childhood was not... He wasn't abused or anything like that. Sure, he might have been neglected, but, I mean, who the hell isn't? And he might have not had as much attention as one should have. But he wasn't malnourished. He wasn't beaten. I think he was just... I think it just, from the start, man, from the get-go. I think it was that and also, like... I think, didn't he even, like, hit his head when he was younger? He had a head injury. He had a head injury. So, which most serial killers do. And there's a lot of times, like, 
he'll talk about how like he has remorse but also yeah, people he says that. people in the j- people in jail when he finally goes to jail spoiler alert he gets arrested but you probably already knew yeah. that um when he goes to jail like he would brag about like he would make like dead bodies out of like the food or whatever and he would laugh about it you know and so i think that's one of the reasons why well, and we'll get into it one of the reasons why he died the way he did cuz you know, one of the prisoners killed him. Yeah. Um, they were probably tired of it. They were just tired of, yeah. So, I think he's honestly, like, a narcissistic liar. And he just is very good at manipulation. So, he's Maybe. kind of, like, making people believe he was sorry. But really, he's not. Yeah. Um, But whatever. Okay. He's crazy. There's so many freaking women though that are like oh my god Jeffrey Dahmer is so hot and I'm like sweetie first of all he's gay so he is not listening to uh, be up your alley go a little higher women come on like um you did you watch dark tourism with me Mm-mm. you need to watch that show it's dark tourism and, and or dark oh, I tourist saw the night stalker the um one on netflix have you i have not watched it there's a lot of crap on there that i didn't know about i was like really what yeah there was some stuff in there like i didn't know that he um um i knew that he raped you know people but did you know mm-hmm. that he raped like younger like children on the side while he was murdering people. No, I didn't know that. He would pick up children and rape them and then just throw them, just throw them to the side. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. And they didn't... Because, I mean, it makes sense, kind of, because I knew that he They didn't want to, um, they didn't want to make a trial on that because that would be, like, they didn't want the kids to come up and all that, so they He was already going to... Yeah, he was already going to die. Prison forever. So so it didn't really matter. And there was, like, this six-year-old girl who's, like, a bomb ass girl who's like in the lineup she's like and you know there's a lineup and he's there and he's like number two and she, and they're like he's there mm-hmm. she's there and it's like all the victims that were alive yeah and um they're like uh does anybody have questions and she was like yeah do i need to write the number two or like spell the number two because it's <laughs> number two so and they're just like oh okay <laughs> she's so was like he registered ass. as a sex offender like, he, did he go to jail? Well, no. No. Like, are you talking about, like, before or, like, during? So he didn't get caught during? No. Okay. They didn't want to bring up the trial again because they'd have to have those all those kids testify. And, and they I mean, just had the die. kids come in there and say, yeah, yes, like, he did. Oh, one okay. of the kids came in there and was like, yeah, that's the guy. Mm. So I oh, think I he killed that. a couple of them, but some of them he was just slept free. Which, I mean, you murdered all those people. I mean, we were all like... That's kind of screwed up that he... That they didn't bring that up, though, in trial. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I did not know that. Yeah, but like... The thing And that, I've listened to a lot of shit about yeah, Richard Ramirez. I was amazed. I was like, what? There would be like, if something came out about Jeffrey Dahmer, I'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> he had all that energy to kill all those people in a year and... Rape all those children. I mean, meth will do it for you, I guess. Like, damn. Meth and coke. Cocaine. Coke. <laughs> coke. Just coke. <laughs> meth and co- cocaine. Um, so, anyways. Okay. We're rambling. So, we will have part two up next Friday. I know you guys probably want it Wednesday, but we're going to make you wait. We're going to make you wait for this yeah. one. Um. Wednesday, we're going to have a bonus episode, and it'll be something kind of lighthearted. It'll be an urban legend. I don't know what kind of urban legend. We'll think of something. Maybe we'll do, like, Slender Man or something like that. I don't Slender know. Slender Man. Um, I say lighthearted, but it's not like we're going to talk about bunnies and, you know, yeah. fairies. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> something lighthearted, it's gonna guys. Be, it's going to be murder of some sort. Um, but Slight it, murder. Yeah. Possession. You know, something. Something Aliens. light. <laughs> Probes, you know, Probes. Um, just not cannibalism and rape and dismemberment and taking showers with dead corpses. Um, so anyway, <laughs> not, not as dark as that. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Um, if you like this video, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and you can follow us wherever you are listening to us and following us at. Um, and we hope that you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.